What's up guys, it's Constantine. So, this top 10 list this week, oh, has it only been a week? I am in a thousand places, but this is for you all. So, the top 10 list this week is going to be about something all of us know and love, and every hiker gets so thrilled about it. And it's about food. More specifically, it's about resupply. More specifically about resupply, it's about the top 10 resupply mistakes. So before we ramble too much, let's just get into it. Not enough food. Bad problems are gonna arise. You may think going into town, you're like, you know what? I bumped out 20s, I bumped out 25s, I bumped out 30s. You looked at the maps for the next section, you're like, I feel like I could do that same thing. Then you're like, you know what? I also had too much food, so I'm gonna buy less and I'm gonna think my averages are gonna go way up. When you have too little food, it's not good. And I know if you've watched these videos, our body's weird, we function off of it, but it's it's up there on the list for a reason because we know many a hiker that if you do too little food, you're gonna be dragging into town to get to that next resupply. So number one, of course, is too little because if you don't have food, you don't have fuel and you can't get after those miles. So make sure to stock up. But this leads into number two, um, you got to find that Goldilocks, right? So bed too small, bed too big. So number two is too much. When you put too much in your pack, you're going to feel that as well. Um, you may be hesitant because the last section took you a little bit longer. You may have ran into scenarios that kind of made you worry a little bit about like, you know what, this next section, I'm going to pack out more food. Happened to us on the GDT, but we even packed out more food and it became less food. So it's a weird combination you got to find. Um, it's through trial and error. Um, GDT was a special experience, so don't compare it on that. But if you're doing AT, PCT, CDT, the food and the miles, you'll be able to find a rhythm and be able to find you're doing 20 miles a day, you're doing 25, and you'll be able to kind of tear into that food system to know how much you need, how many calories you need, what works for your body. It is very specific to who you are as a hiker, who you are as a person, and how you function with different amount of calories, different types of food. So find what works for you, but don't put too much in the pack. Don't put too little in the pack. Number three, we touched on this a few videos ago, drop boxes. Use them, use them wisely. Don't make them too frequent. When a drop box is too frequent, you are gonna get absolutely sick of your food really fast. So when we started the PCT, after we finished our AT hike, you're like, we were five months off trail. You're like, you know what? We're gonna start craving tuna again. Mm -mm. We packed six drop boxes. Really, really, really happy we did not pack more. We packed six drop boxes every single lunch in those drop boxes was tuna. First day on trail, could not do tuna. We became a swap system. Every, every hiker we said, we were trying to pawn off that tuna. So don't do drop boxes. You're gonna get sick of them. But when we say don't do drop boxes, if that is your preferred method and it works for you, great, but don't get too sucked into that mentality and try to make something work that doesn't work for you. Going to town, you're gonna to be craving different things each week, you're gonna be craving different things each town stop. So do what works for you again, but don't get too sucked into the Dropbox system because you're gonna to have to do post office hours, same food, a lot of stuff can arise from that. So be wary. Number four, goes hand in hand with the resupply, the timing into town. So this kind of goes into your planning of miles so when you're trying to get into town, you might have checked that town out when you were in the last town and checked out the store hours and figured out kind of your method to the madness. So you might have had to get 10 miles out of town that previous night to get into there when the store is open. You might have had to get five miles outside of town because the store hours were wonky. It might have been a weekend. So make sure your timing is correct and make sure you know the hours of where you're going to resupply because some towns, depending on the trail system you do, may only have one store. That store may only have two hours of operation a day. And when we say may, it's happened to us. So it is a thing. Um, so be wary about the timing, make sure your miles link up and make sure you know where you're gonna go to resupply and you know you have enough time walking into town. So make sure your timing's key guys, it is key. We have gone hungry because we did not time it correctly. Number five prices in town and this is hard to do because if you don't do the drop box which we just said don't do um you're gonna have to pay town prices some towns small towns one store if there's only one store they can set those prices anywhere they want so when you're resupplying you might have to go with different brands or might go have to go with something that you're not craving as much because 
a bag of Oreos might be $10, but then that thing of ramen, it might be upcharged as well, maybe 30 cents, but you might go ramen heavy because you can't pull yourself to spend $10 on Oreos. Um, no way. You're going to crave them a lot, but mm -mm. so make sure you know the prices. And when you go in there, don't just be like, oh, well, this is what my hiking food is. You have to adapt. You have to feel out what that town is about, what that resupply is about. And if the next town is only three or four days away, you can survive on ramen for three or four days. We have done it many times. You can survive on peanut butter three or four days. Whew, we have not done that many times. We've done that. Let's not get back into the peanut butter scenario. No peanut butter here. So kind of adapt once you go in there because the prices are going to fluctuate. Not everything's always going to be the same price. And you're going to have to adapt your food choices unless you want to just be cha-chinging. Number six, this can also tie into the prices. These are in bigger towns. Um, it is distances to that resupply point. When you're really tired and you really want to break, you might get into town 8, 9, 10 a.m. in the morning. Sometimes you might not even get into town to 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. And that's really not a Nero day. By the time you do your laundry, by returning calls, returning emails, all your town chores, um, it's pretty much nighttime. So resupply, when are you going to do that? So a lot of the time hikers will go to the closest resupply and the closest resupply might be that one spot that is exponentially more pricey than the one a mile away. So pick the store and look around you because yeah, sometimes it is great to go to that convenience store and grab a couple snacks for the nearer day. But if you're going to do a full resupply for five or six days, those savings start to add up instead of resupplying at the store right across from your motel or right across from your hotel. Maybe walk that extra mile. Um, chat with some through hiking buddies while you're doing it. It's not the best. Um, it'll keep your legs limber though. And sometimes you do want it. Most of the times you just want to relax. You also get to explore the town, explore the town where you are. So distance, make sure you're looking at all the places around you in the town and don't get that tunnel vision of motel, restaurant, corner store for resupply because yeah, it will get pricey and it might not be the best. It might not have the right food for you either. So look for that. Number seven, what we like to call town goggles. And this is referring to when you go into a grocery store, you have been out on trail for five or six days, so everything is going to look good. You're going to look at that cinnamon bun and be like, I can pack that out. You can pack out cinnamon buns. Not a good example. You're going to look at that rotisserie and say, I can pack that out. You're like, I can make that work. I just got to move some things around in my pack. I'll make it work. Mm, you could. It's not going to be comfortable. Your pack's going to be greasy with rotisserie chicken. There's a lot of stuff that can arise from that. So when you go into a grocery store, realize you have town goggles on. The stuff you're seeing and saying, that's going to be great to pack out. It might be most of the time you're just really hungry and you just want, really want to eat. So make sure you eat before going into that grocery store just to diminish the town goggles a little bit because you're not going to get rid of them when you're in town. You're going to be hungry a lot of the time. So make sure your town goggles, you're aware of them when going in there and don't pack out the full rotisserie chicken unless you want to or don't pack out the four pound bag of jujubes. Yes, we actually recommend packing out six. So. Don't pack out the four pound bag, pack out the six pound bag. Again, hand in hand, trail goggles. What this refers to probably has different references. And I know some of you guys are thinking of those references right now. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the trail goggles you have when you're eating lunch or eating dinner with your buddies. You're looking at their resupply and you're like, oh, that looks really good. I should get that next town. And you keep thinking about that. Keep thinking about that. So you get to the next town, you go into resupply and you're picking out your buddy's food. You've never tried it before. It looked great on trail, but they had a system that worked for them. And if you pack that out, you might realize one bite in, it's not great. You bought 20 of them. Your resupply. Have fun for the next couple lunches. So be aware of the trail goggles as well. And maybe ask a buddy for a bite. Say, can I try that? And it's going to taste good on trail again because everything tastes good when you're out there pushing those miles. But Make sure you're getting the food that works for you. And when you go into the resupply, maybe try a few, but don't get hyper-focused and grab 20 of them. Grab two, maybe. Then gradually phase it up if you want or phase it back down if you didn't like it. So be wary of the trail goggles as well because both of these goggles, they, they bounce back and forth when you're out there and it's all about food and they'll shift. They're tricky. They're very tricky. Number nine, we got to put this in there. Most of you guys aren't going to do it. We wanted to put this in there because for the ones that are going to do it, we want to give you a word of caution. Don't pack out purely candy. 
you're not going to have energy. Your mouth is going to be dry. It's going to be sour. We have packed out a purely candy resupply before. And granted, it wasn't for a week on trail. It was for like two or three days. But we were craving food a lot. Um, we thought we were going to only be cra craving candy. We all, it was like four or five of us, and we bought bulk bags of candy. And we made these candy grab bags. And I think we packed out like two or three pounds of candy at least. One, not enough candy for three days. Two, too much candy for three days. I know, how does that work? It works, trust me, because not enough food, but too much candy. And our mouths felt nasty. Our bodies didn't feel great. And that led into some other scenarios on trail that we won't get too specific with, but that wasn't normal as, as well either. So don't pack out purely candy. Learn, learn from our mistakes because we've made many. We're gonna continue to make them. Eh, maybe learn, maybe learn a little bit. Maybe don't, pack out purely candy. You will learn after that point. Number 10, forgetting necessities. A resupply is not purely about food and as much as we love to talk about food, a resupply is not always purely about food. When you go into that grocery store, remember, brush your teeth, toothpaste, and replace that toothbrush. I mean, you can get miles out of it, but replace it eventually. It gets nasty, guys. Um, it gets grimy from just trail. It gets dirt in it. Tooth toothbrushes eventually have to be replaced. Accept it. Part of life. We've accepted it. So, yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got off on a sidetrack there for a second. But when you go into a grocery store, it's not purely about food. Toothbrush, toothpaste, batteries, TP, plastic bags. Plastic bags are a big one. Sometimes you'll forget that you unbox stuff and put it in plastic bags to save weight or you put different chips in plastic bags. A lot of the time we've had to go back to the grocery store because we have forgot plastic bags and they are a necessity. When you're trying to fit a bag of chips this big in your pack, it doesn't work. If you put that into a plastic bag, it can work. And then plastic bags are good trash bags. They're good waterproof bags. They're very good. So you go into the grocery store maybe it's gonna be hard we still have yet to master this too get the necessities first then go food shopping because after you have your cart full of food most of the time you're gonna to want to get out of there and eat whatever you got for the walk out of the grocery store you're not gonna to want to go shopping for necessities so maybe go in there grab the necessities go grocery shopping um, resupply on what you want and then be eating that drumstick on the way out knowing you got all the necessities for your pack as well Number 11, doesn't tie directly into a resu resupply as in the terms of like buying stuff to pack in your pack at a grocery store, but it ties into the resupply mentality. And number 11 is missing town breakfast. No, don't do it. Don't do it. We have done it many times. We're like, you know what? We've eaten a lot in town. We feel pretty comfortable right now. We have enough in our pack. We've got four or five more days until the next town. There'll be food there. We don't really need town breakfast. Um, we just kind of want to go hiking. And yeah, that can work. But within the next one, two, three hours, you are going to be fantasizing about food again. You're not going to be fantasizing about that food in your pack. You won't be fantasizing about that breakfast you missed. And that's going to lead down a multiple hour kind of thought train that it consumes you. Just like that food you should have consumed, those thoughts consume you as well. And you should not have missed that town breakfast. We have so many burritos that we missed in our lives and we can't get those moments back, folks. It's, it's sad. It's, it depresses us as we talk about it. I mean, we might not be able to go on with this video, but don't miss town breakfast because you're going to regret it. So that is secret number 11. As always, guys, really appreciate watching this. Um, 2021 hiking season for us is coming up close. So we got a few more of these in the bag for you. And then it's going to be trail videos. Um, so, yeah, a month and a half, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. But still so much to do. Um, so, so much to do. It is going to be a crazy year. 2021, 8,000 miles, four to five trail systems. And the big one in there at the NCT. Can't wait. Stoked, but busy, 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 busy. And, and as you guys can see, our mind, if you are members of our Patreon page, you can see our minds all over the place as we talk about stories, gear choices, the planning that goes into it. But we just wanted to say thanks again for watching. If you like this content, we would love to hear from you with a like, comment, or subscribe below. And if you really love this content, you can head over to our Patreon page because there it shows you 
the behind the scenes of what goes into life on and off trail because on or off trail it's really one thing isn't it guys so yeah if you really love that stuff head on over there and you get to hear more of us talk if you want to support our gear company head on over to 11 skies we are actually having a winter sale right now all the way until the end of december to get people ready for 2021 guys those miles are coming again and we want to give you guys the best deals we can give you and be able to support getting back out into the wild support getting back out into that nature and support the miles that are going to be coming for y'all so we're really excited to be able to have that best deal over there now so head on over to 11 skies and check out the gear that we've made from 16,000 miles plus of experience and only continue to better and better um we're really passionate about it we couldn't have done any of this without all of y'all so really appreciate it cool cool peace